Hello everybody, Jeff Arshund here. Well, it's reset, it's Tuesday, which means more emilliants. Hello. If I can click her. Eh. There we go. So. So we got to deliver three more luncheon coffers this week. Here are some I prepared earlier. Ah, right. This will happen when you fit, hit too much of that. You can only have 2,000 of each of these scripts. However, there's nothing I can really spend it on at the moment, so I'm just going to wind up with, you know, overstock. <laughs> yep, I'm aware. Now we're on to the next one. Ah, there's our master artisan. You'll be happy to hear students have been quite pleased with their meals of late, thanks in no small part to your luncheon coffers. When they attended the studium, Alizé would always request her meals be prepared, while Alphano was always quite happy to sate his appetite with Archon Loaf each and every day. A peculiar trait he inherited from his father. Archon Loaf, you don't want to know the recipe. It is very nutritious. But good lordy, does it? Mm. Nope. <laughs> it has every piece of nutrition you could ever need in a meal. In any meal. In every meal. Thrown into one. The taste. There is no taste. Oh, there's a master she wishes to discuss with us. Concerns Mila. I fear she, I fear she may be having difficulty with spellcraft. It is a complex art that cannot be learned quickly, nor through pure effort. One must have the aptitude for it. Fortunately, from what I've observed, Mila appears to not only have the capacity to wield magic, but also a clear understanding of how it works, in theory at least. And, as you have seen yourself, she holds a strong desire to succeed. But I fear her determination is merely born of stubbornness. With each passing day, she returns home later and later. Oh boy. Lest you wonder, being a considerate soul that she is, Mila always sends word in advance. Even today, she notifi notified me that she'd be studying on campus until late. I understand all too well the desire to prove oneself, but it should never come at the cost of one's own health. I must speak with her immediately before she falls ill, or worse. Yeah, if you push yourself too hard with magic in this game, you could... Ah! Well, basically think of it like trying to push yourself too hard at the gym. What happens if you push yourself too hard at the gym? You could damage your muscles. Irrevocably so. Same thing with magic, except magic is tied to this ether substance, which is basically your life energy. So push too hard with that, and... Ugh. You may think me overprotective, but she is still just a child. I have a duty to look after her, both as a mother and a friend. Yet the studium is ever so large, is it not? I'd be eternally grateful if you would help me search for her. Ugh, that face. I see where Alphano gets his negotiation skills from. <laughs> Wonderful. You need but say the word. I am ready to leave at a moment's notice. We're dragging Mama Amali We're dragging Mama Levier along with us. Considers you the champion of House Levier. <laughs> Oh, new favorite. Okay, so she's not. So we're not dragging her along with us. Okay. A new quest continues story of Lane's efforts with the economic and all shall is now available. Buzz completion. Ah, okay, so we do have to drag her along with us. Okay. A mother's love. Eager to depart for the studium. I've informed Marilyn to wait here in case Millie returns home before we find her. With that, let us be off. Well, I can scarcely wait to see the look in her face when we arrive. Oh, so we don't get to drag her with us. Okay. Right, off to the studium. Where's Mama Levier? Wait for her to load in. There we go. It is strange that having come in all this way, I only now begin to have second thoughts about my plan to surprise Mila. Surely she would be glad to see us. More so, I should think, if she were to see you in the lead. <laughs> yeah. 
Phenomenon is where she's most likely to be, so I suggest we start there. We have Mama Levieur joining us. Okay. Is there any talky bits? I should have known she would not be here. This is There is rarely an opportunity to remain idle at a studio, after all. She did mention some manner of practical training today, however. Perhaps we can find her at Maker's Meet. Or fail on that, we can ask if any students have seen her. But my, how wonderful it is to walk through these halls again. So many fond memories. Perhaps you would care to hear a story or two? Oh, I'm always up for some dirt on Forshino. I am always up for some dirt on him. Especially since I can then pass said dirt on to uh, the twins. My first. <laughs> yeah, this one's the Alizé fangirl. I always wonder about that. Discuss the studio. It was a twins' graduation when last I was here. Unfortunately, an emergency forum meeting prevented Fortuna from attending. I've never seen Alizé in such a foul mood. Alpha no, me I will try to put on a brave face, saying he understood the demand and duty of the forum. But a mother knows when her children are hurting. Fortuna was no better. Would that you could have seen it. He spent an entire day with Alpha in the kitchen, baking batch after batch of ginger cookies for Alizé in an amusing attempt to cheer her up. Oh my god. <laughs> Bribe her with cookies. <laughs> You're hungry. I could have our attendance on that matter prepare something in our return. <laughs> oh no. Alright. Put this window. Mm. Okay. Glam. Ah, there we go. I'm sorry. Did you need something? Please forgive us, intrusion, but would you perhaps to know where we can find Miladine? She's a student newly arrived from Thavner. Ah, how rude of me! I am her host mother, Emilienne's Levieur. Emilienne's Levieur. Ah, right. Quick point of order. The twins are something of celebrities here, given the whole young prodigy early graduation thing. That and the Leviers are stupid rich. <sighs> yes, of course, Melodine, she's in the same course as me. She usually heads over to the pavilion by Numenon to study on her own after class. Perfect, she shan't be hard to find then. My apologies again for the disturbance. No problem at all. It was an honor to meet you, milady. You have no time to lose. Let us make for the pavilion near Numenon. As a student, my studies here centered on the arcane. Fortunal, meanwhile, studied the art of somanotics, a dreadfully difficult discipline undertaken by those who aspire to become sages. One faithful day, he and I found ourselves working together on an experiment. I had never worked closely with him before, but I knew him well by reputation. He was said to be unbelievably cantankerous, stubborn, unapproachable, and overall quite insufferable. All of which turned out to be true! <laughs> Naturally, I wish to learn everything about him. Oh my god. He was always so flustered whenever we spoke, averting his eyes this way and that. It was also very amusing and peculiar. To even think of it begs for laughter. <laughs> this is probably the best we keep this conversation between ourselves. Oh! I don't think so, dear. I mean, this is the kind of dirt that Alizé and Alphano want. <laughs> These are the kind of shenanigans they desire to know about. You should know about Numenon. Well, there's not much to tell about those dusty old halls. Though I suppose they are not without a memorable moment or two. I once ventured there in the dead of night for some last minute research. The deadline for my thesis was close at hand, you see. The corridors were dark and empty, with naught but the soft echo of my footsteps to keep me company. Then suddenly, a shadowy phantom appeared before me, as if from the very void itself. Much to my surprise, a phantom, it was not, nay. It was Fortuno. Under the veil of his vanished spell, he'd been sneaking around the Forbidden Archives. 
Oh, 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 really? Look on his face. He nearly died from embarrassment. Speak of the snow one, I beg of you. He cried. I obliged, but under condition he take me to dinner. I trust you understand he's not to hear a word of this conversation. Oh, fortune, oh no. The kids? Oh, definitely. I am definitely spilling the beans on this one to, to the twins. Pudding way. Ah, there she is, fast asleep. She, is, she doesn't seem quite herself. Mila? Oh, not asleep. Probably just exhausted. Lady Lemonians. And Jaffa as well. Hello, is something wrong? Not at all, my dear. Everything's quite alright. We merely wish to check on you. It is getting rather late, after all. You must be famished. Oh, I'm sorry for making you worry. I just got so absorbed in what I was doing. That's kind of why we. Inv that's kind of why Charlene's invented Archon Loaf to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mammoth, aka a, me a mechanical puppet. I take it you've been using the mammoth there to practice your healing. Yes, but to be perfectly honest, it hasn't been going well. Oh. The mammoth is designed specifically to respond to healing magics. Rather than risk the danger of practice on a living patient, students use puppets such as this. When a spell is successful, the mammoth will rise to its feet. Observe. Amazing. Lady Meanless, that was simply incredible. Such grace and precision. Well, I was spending even an ons of excess energy. It was... It was absolutely perfect. Yet no matter what I do, the mammoth refuses to even move. I've been so, so, trying so hard to prove my mother wrong, but maybe she was right. Maybe I never should have convinced myself that I could master healing magics. Oh, no, 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 no. I came all this way and accomplished nothing. You've been so kind to me, Lady Meanless, and I don't want to waste any more of your precious time. Perhaps it'd be best if I returned home. Oh, no, 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 no. We are not giving up that easy. Nothing could be further from the truth. You think so too, don't you? Yes, that is simply not true. Please cheer up, Mia. Yep, yeah, that, that is how the mammoths all talk. <laughs> Whoa, um... Are you making it speak, Lady Emilyance? Nope. Well, maybe. Parents are always thinking of their children. Your mother surely wants the best for you. I know that. I do, truly. That's why I'm afraid of disappointing her. You are not a puppet. You need not dance to your mother's tune. You have determination, passion, and a wonderful dream. Besides, always doing as one is told is not easy. Take it from me, I'm an expert. <laughs> oh, good lord. That's, not, that's hardly something to brag about. <laughs> There's a darling smile I've come to admire. Mila, there is no doubt in my mind that a brilliant, hard-working young lady like yourself would make a fine alchemist. Your mother surely saw the same, and simply wished for you to walk an easier path. A path where your success would be assured. But with great resolve and determination, you fought to pursue your own way forward. That This is part of what it means to become an adult. After a child strikes out on her own, a mother can only pray they find happiness. I don't know what to say. Perhaps a light stroll might help me to collect my thoughts before I make any rash decisions. We shall take a leisurely walk back to the estate. I would much rather hear your decision once we are returned. You'll like to come down with something if you stay outdoors over lawn.
This is just far too wholesome. <laughs> then again, after the tomb and despair that has been the rest of Endwalker, a bit of wholesomeness is always a good thing. Decided. I'm going to finish what I started. If there came a day when a life I could have saved was lost because I gave him now, I'd never be able to forgive myself. More than that, I want to repay the support and kindness you have both shown me. I want to make you proud. That is, if you'll still have me. Oh, come now, you ne hardly need ask. You shall ever be welcome here, Mila, and have our unwavering support. Have you any sage counsel for our aspiring we weaver of magics here? Worst comes to worst, you always have your fists. <laughs> no! Practice makes perfect. I see. No shortcuts, just hard work. Drilling over and over until wielding magic feels like second nature. I will do my best and follow your example. One last word of advice from a former student of the studium. Set aside practicing healing incantations for the time being, and focus solely on manipulating the mammoth. Magic is the power to convert one's ether into tangible, to tangible phenomena. The key to, is to visualize precisely what it is you wish to bring forth. I believe your problem stems from the lack of a solid image in your mind's eye. When picturing the act of healing, what do you envision? I don't know really. I've been so caught up with trying to perfect the technique, I hadn't given it any thought. Then focus on manipulating the mammoth, maybe it's just what you need. You can concentrate it on Ill clear images like making it walk, run, or sit. With enough practice and repetition, more abstract concepts, such as the inner workings of healing a wound, should become easier to conceive. I see, the whole process just seems so complex that I... But that's in the past. From now on, I'm going to focus on visualizing everything, step by step. Ask the spirit, but do take it not to push yourself too hard. For now, I think a hot bowl of soup is precisely what you need. It's a Thavnerian recipe, so I hope it offers a taste of home. <laughs> oh, the little bounce! Oh, the little happy bounce. I cannot thank you enough for accompanying me today. I admit, I may have lost track of time in all the excitement. Now then, if Mila and the other students are going to continue their training, I believe it prudent we prepare a new set of mammoths. Those of cruder make are more troublesome to manipulate, and thus I must ask you to fashion aetheroconductive units to replace them. With a mammoth of good quality, Mila should be able to grasp how to manipulate her ether rather quickly, and I shall be beside her, held ready to help at every turn. Oh, that's cute. Saito Vono and Sideretis Cookie. That those are just ador that cookie just looks adorable. Oh, how can I eat it? It looks so cute. If you're in need of a respite, you're always welcome here. As we discussed, I would like as many mammoths as you can prepare to aid the student's training. A Theroconductive Mammoth. A mammoth crafted with materials highly conductive to ether, making it an ideal training tool for fledgling reader wielders of magics. Right, here are two I made earlier. As you know, mammoths are invaluable tools for helping students gauge their capacity for ethereal manipulation. Everything from their clothes down to their very cores must be highly conductive to ether if we are to observe clear results. This appears to be sufficiently sensitive to ether. The students are pleased to have a mammoth so well suited to practicing their healing magics.
All right. I need to make another mammoth. Close that up. Custom deliveries. A million. A conductive mammoth. All right. So. Oh. Okay. That's changed up the rotation a little bit here. So if I put that there, put that there. Put that there, put that there. There we go. Right. So. Put that first. And then great strides. Two. Three. Four. Bump up the progress a bit there. Great strides. Two. Three. Four. And use you. Observe. Observe. Just got that in there. Oof. Just got that one in there. Thank you, not only for procuring supplies, but for believing in my vision. After everything I've heard of your grand adventures with Athano and Alize, <laughs> never in my wildest dreams that I believe we might find ourselves working together. I couldn't have asked for a better partner. And that is all the deliveries done for Emilians this week. So, see you guys next week when we go into her. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I know. Next week should be the final week, I think, before we can, uh, well, before all these degenerates start sticking her in 2B gear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Jaffa Archfiend, out.